2020 is already looking to be another solid year in games, but that isn't to say there aren't a few titles that have us worried. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 video games that might suck in 2020. Stay behind cover. All right, which one of you B movie extras shot at me? So for this list, we're looking at the games that have us gutting our wallets a bit. But I want to make this absolutely clear. We're not saying we want these games to suck. We want them to be good, but there are a handful of red flags that we're hoping developers will address before release. We need to recruit a resistance. I know what you're thinking. Where do we start? Number 10, Watch Dogs Legion. As you can see, London's having a rough time of it. What with these nasty opportunists seizing control. Don't get us wrong, we're absolutely excited for Watch Dogs Legion. The ability to turn NPCs into playable characters had us hooked the moment we heard it was announced, but it comes bearing some concerns. With so many potential characters in the mix, might the story suffer? Another factor in our worry lies in Ubisoft's recent announcement that the game would be delayed from its March 6th release date due to Ghost Recon Breakpoint failing to meet expectations. With efforts being focused on making Breakpoint a better game, will Legion be able to make the 2020 or 2021 window? Are developers going to have to crunch to get this game out on time? Only time will tell. Open your eyes and take a look around. Number 9. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Saints and Sinners looks like a solid VR game, but its downfall may lie in just its name. You mean to tell us there is yet another Walking Dead game coming out? Much like the television series, there are some fans who feel like the franchise is starting to overstay its welcome in the video game space. We can certainly feel the brand fatigue too, what with Telltale series just ending in March 2019, and Overkill's game failing to impress anyone in 2018. Saints and Sinners may turn out okay, but given how many Walking Dead games have spawned in this past decade, it may not be turning any heads. Number 8. Mel of Honor Above and Beyond Having been dormant for 8 years, Metal of Honor is being resurrected, but rather than making it a first person shooter to compete with Call of Duty aka the Metal of Honor killer, Respawn Entertainment is turning it into a VR shooter. There are a few things wrong with this picture, the first being Respawn's workload. How has the studio managed to dedicate enough time to this while supporting Apex Legends and Jedi Fallen Order post launch? And is there any hope for Titanfall 3? Second, how is this VR shooter going to stand up from the hundreds of other shooting gallery VR games, most notably Half-Life Alex on the horizon? And finally, with 2012's Warfighter pretty much destroying the Medal of Honor brand name, how exactly is Above and Beyond going to break the mold? Don't say VR. Then we've accomplished what we set out to do. Number 7. Comanche This is one of those 90s franchises that fans hold in high regard. As such, a reboot is an exciting prospect, but this doesn't seem to be one fans were hoping for. Announced at Gamescom 2019, the Comanche reboot is bringing the series back while leaving behind one of the best parts of the franchise, the single player. Scheduled for release in March 2020, Comanche is to be an online team-based deathmatch title and not much else. Maybe it would have been better to release a Comanche collection to reintroduce the series and buy them enough development time to make this a full-fledged game. Number 6. Predator Hunting Grounds Hostile spotted. Ever since Ilphonic stopped producing content updates for Friday the 13th due to a complex lawsuit involving the franchise, we've been curious to see what they've been up to. Predator Hunting Grounds is the answer, and it seems like it could be a promising asymmetrical multiplayer game. Unfortunately, the small amount of gameplay that has been shown to date has us worried that Ilphonic may not have learned its lessons from Friday the 13th. Even by pre-alpha standards, the graphics are not that impressive. As for the gameplay, the concept of Marines hunting down a sole predator sounds cool on paper, but we're worried this might get tiresome after a while. Number 5. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Quarantine There he is! We found him! Like Watch Dogs Legion, Rainbow Six Quarantine is another Ubisoft title delayed because of Breakpoint's poor performance. However, we're more concerned about Quarantine in the same way we're worried about The Walking Dead. Ubisoft's showcase at E3 2019 showed that the publisher is planning a hefty number of Tom Clancy games, and it's gone to the point where they're starting to blend together. Rainbow Six Quarantine is trying to spice things up by being a zombie-style shooter. Seriously, how many zombie-type shooter games can we have before we call it too many? How much more Tom Clancy are we getting in 2020? Do any of the late author's books have zombies in them? No, seriously, I actually don't know that one. 
Number four, Pokemon Sleep. Nintendo has been killing it with console exclusives lately, but their mobile games have had questionable decisions. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp introduced an eyebrow-raising subscription plan, and Mario Kart 2's monetization was insane. These recent outings have us concerned about Nintendo's mobile efforts, and Pokemon Sleep could be the breaking point. Get this, it's a mobile game that tracks how long the user sleeps, and the Pokemon company has said it will turn sleeping into entertainment. There are already smartwatch apps that can track your sleep, but how this is supposed to be a game? Who knows? Still, the last thing we want is to be nickel and dimed in our sleep for a limited edition Mewtwo in a nightcap. The game is being created with the help of Select Button, who developed Pokemon Magikarp Jump. Number three, Minecraft Dungeons. It was a time of great adventure and danger. Minecraft Dungeons may have previewed in E3 2019, but to be honest, we're just not seeing it. Look at it this way. Take away the voxel style, and this could be literally any game. On top of that, there is nothing special about it beyond its visuals. It's a dungeon crawler, with no crafting, no building, and no harvesting. You know, the whole point of Minecraft. And as a dungeon crawler, there isn't even a class system, which is something that dungeon crawlers have had since the arcade days of Gauntlet. The big question dungeons will have to answer is why? Why play this when they can go play Minecraft right now? Or a different dungeon crawler? He is hoping things will improve before launch. Number two, Marvel's Avengers. What started out as a promising new Marvel game made by Crystal Dynamics has quickly devolved into an uncanny title that's reminding us of the bad days of superhero games. For starters, there's an uncomfortable non-resemblance to the MCU's Avengers, which makes the designs come off as indecisive. Then there's the fact that it's going to be a live service with microtransactions. That news alone has already turned off many players, given last year's infamous disaster. With Square showing very little of the game and already announcing heroes for post-launch, this could end up being one of the year's most disappointing games. Here's hoping they prove us wrong. Seriously, we want this to be good. The city's collapsing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Halo Infinite. Yeah, get ready for controversy with this one, but you'll soon see why. With the imminent wave of next-gen hardware on the horizon, we've been eyeballing this launch title pretty hard, but not for good reasons. We're already on edge with Halo Infinite due to rumors that this game is being a live service title following a job listing at 343 Studios. However, the reason why it's number one here is that there have been some waves behind the scenes that have us deeply concerned. In August 2019, Infinite's creative director Tim Longo left 343 Industries, and lead producer Mary Olsen left two months later. The studio has tried assuring fans that there is no creative dilemma, but this is looking like a pattern eerily similar to what happened with Anthem. 343, you guys might want to take a lot of fan feedback on this one. I'm poor here is. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.